Hello and welcome back to Party Talk, where we empower leaders in youth drug prevention. Today, I'm chatting with James Foley, and I wanted to invite him to the show because this guy is the tech guru who you want on your team. Like he's somebody you wish you had in your office to help you with all things design, websites, AI, um, integrating, making things look amazing. And so I was like, hey, James, will you chat with me? Will you talk a little bit about what you do in prevention and then how you integrate technology into it? So welcome, James, to the Party Talk podcast. Thank you. I'm super excited to be here. Uh, hey, everyone. My name is uh, James Foley. I'm a prevention educator and graphic designer at uh, on Virginia's Eastern Shore, and I'm part of our Community Services Board, which is one of 40 boards across the state. And so it's been awesome seeing the prevention space grow over the years. I've been here for a little over 60 years, and it's been awesome seeing things go from direct services and switching into that whole piece where you're actually providing services to people as programs. And it's been great to see the different things you can do with it, different avenues, the different awareness, the ways you can create awareness. It's been brilliant. Awesome. And before we dive into some of the tech stuff, tell us a little bit about um, just the prevention experience, the the presentations or anything you're doing in prevention right now so we can kind of get a background on how you how you do prevention. Yeah, so with uh, prevention, we a lot of times we take out those classes. We go to our local community college. We offer uh, things for our nursing student programs, and they're taking our mental health first aid classes, our uh, opioid overdose prevention, things called uh, adverse childhood experiences. So we're doing the trauma and resilience, so we're talking about those. And we're going to local businesses. We're trying to get into our school systems. We have a, a house palace program. So our preschool kids are getting these these lessons already. And we're trying to get these more prevention messages on suicide prevention, uh, opioid overdose prevention, because it is happening in those lower grades. And so we're trying to get into our schools and just all this stuff out into our community as much as possible. And it's been Awesome trying to get the things out on social media as well, but getting into and in front of people is exactly where you need to be with prevention. Okay. And I just have to ask, because I'm curious now, what can you tell a preschooler that isn't necessarily like introducing them to drugs, but is helpful for you know them to save a life? Like, what does that look like? <laughs> it's mostly the same as the, uh, the old do not uh, mean, say no uh, to drugs kind of campaign. You, you really want to teach them and educate them what it kind of looks like. And this is the way you don't really want to use it. It does. This is the things that can happen. And you want to keep it out of your body and keep it away from you. And it's okay that other people do it because maybe they're grown ups, but that's not for you and you want to stay on your own path. And so those are the kinds of lessons we try to really get into our schools and try to teach them more about prevention and start that early. Okay. Then let's, uh, let's move to some tech stuff. And, and this is what I'm really excited to chat with you about. So will you just kind of give us a menu? of what are the things that you're utilizing in your job as a prevention and supervisor doing your work? What are some tools or some menu items that you utilize right now? The biggest things I really utilize are uh, ChatGPT with uh, a focus on Bean Chat now because it has Bean Chat and has the 4.0 uh, capabilities with ChatGPT. And you can use it for blog posts, social media posts, really generating those things the content around it, uh, SEO friendly. So the search engine optimization, uh, tags, those meta tags, you can really get those really detailed in uh, chat GPT and it creates it instantly just for you. Everyone gets a different one whenever you put a, a different thing in. So you have your own part and you can put your own swing and sway on things. Okay. Um, let's, uh, and let's break that down a little bit. So, uh, for those of us who aren't the tech, uh, people, you mentioned some things already. So chat, GPT, Bing, you said something about a 4.0. I'll have to ask you about that. Uh, <laughs> and we mentioned SEO and meta tags. So let's break it down. Hey, I'm in I'm in third grade, James. All right. Tell me that same thing you just told me, uh, but third grade. <laughs> I always forgot. I got to break it down for people. Uh, that's that's <laughs> so with uh, chat GPT, it's the, the newest, biggest, hottest thing with AI. Um, it's you put your text in, whether you want to solve a problem, you can uh, ask it how many uh, liters are in an ounce or, uh, or something crazy like that. Or if you want to generate a post on social media, I want, I can put in, I want a social media post for Facebook and it has to have with uh, raise awareness of suicide prevention. It can actually generate you a whole script through there. If you do a radio PSA or a social media post, 
It generates everything for you based on what you put in. It's called a prompt. And uh, with ChatGPT, there's different uh, functions. It's now on 3.5 is the free version you can get on ChatGPT. With, um, if you want the 4.0 version, you go to uh, Bing Chat. So Bing.com, they have their own uh, chat bot now. And it actually allows you to get ch uh, free chat GPT for answers from there. So you can go there and get those. And uh, with the search engine optimization, so pretty much if you create a blog post or anything online, uh, these crawlers, these uh, spiders from Google have to try to find your information somehow. And so when you do a Google search, your information has to come up. And that's because of SEO friendly tags, those meta tags that you put in. When you actually put those meta tags in, what people uh, somewhere around the world put in something on Google, you search for it, suicide prevention or Eastern Shore or word app, people will actually be able to find that and your information based on those tags you put in. And so those are generative. They come straight from ChatGPT and they're really awesome, really powerful to use. Wow. So could I put in, I could go to Bing, um, what did you call it? Bing chat. Uh, Bing chat. Yeah. Okay. Bing chat, let's say .com, if that's what it's called. So go to bingchat.com and maybe I make a profile or something. Then I can literally put in the search bar. Uh, will you write me a 2000 word blog on the dangers of marijuana for teens? And it's going to create something based on information it finds across the entire internet and create that for me, right? 100%. It actually, uh, Bing Chat actually puts down uh, credible sources for you as well. Whereas ChatGPT doesn't put those sources in. So when it lists data or facts or statistics, uh, ChatGPT, you kind of think, thinking, well, maybe that's right, maybe it's not right, but I'm just going to go with it. With Bing Chat, you can actually look up those statistics and where those facts actually come from. So you can actually verify that that information as you're going. And so it's a very powerful tool to have. That is incredible. I mean, that alone is just worth so much, especially as people who are involved in coalitions. Sometimes you're starting off and you don't have a, a tech guy or a James in the office and you, you need to produce all this stuff yourself. So why, why not utilize something that's out there that does the research for you? And then you can add your little flavor onto it and post it. And this, this something in case people don't know, like using SEO or search engine optimization, it helps people find you online. He talked about those spiders that are crawling and looking for your website. Um, so if you are providing services for your community, you might ask it to write something that, and maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, James, but I could put in, write me a 500 word blog about this. Um, I want to rank for these keywords. And then you can put in your city name, um, you know, recovery services or drug prevention or alcohol education. Can you ask it to do that stuff as well? Absolutely. You can drill down as, as much as you want. You can make the prompt as detailed as you want to get the exact results that you need. Um, I mean, I make radio PSAs using ChatGPT and the thing that you can actually deal uh, and go down with on, on ChatGPT is amazing. You can get uh, scripts made for your area, made for your exact numbers that you need, the hotlines that you need. It puts in everything exactly what you want. Yeah. And one thing that I've been just recently testing out was number one, the blog capabilities and two, just writing emails. Like you might have to invite, um, you know, community partners to be a part of your event. So you can tell these, the search bar, basically I'm calling it, but you can tell it about your event and say, will you write an invitation letter uh, for, you know, these community partners or these businesses or sponsors. And what's really neat is so these programs are insanely smart. So they know actually what's working and what's not. If you imagine like yourself as a copywriter, someone who's a really skilled copywriter, this chat program might have the same skills as a professional copywriter because it's collecting data from all the different copy across the internet. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's, it's been a breeze to work with because it makes a uh, job so much faster and things are more accurate as you go through. And the more you use it, the more you know where to push the uh, the AI to to get the results that you need. And so even if you don't, if it gives you a social media post and you like half things in it, you can tell it that you want it to change the voice, the tone of voice. You can tell it to change the way it uses words and it will drill down exactly what you need. It's, it's an incredible tool. And I think people need to use it more because it saves 
time, it saves money, and it saves so much effort. <laughs> that is so cool. And I've used it where I've had it write emails for me and then just said, can you make that half the length or a shorter email? And it will do it. And it's it's super impressive. And I, I want to ask you this, James. I don't know if you are aware of this or know the future of AI, where it's going, but um, for for where it is going and allowing the capabilities, like is this something that do you think it's going to be adapted by, you know, every department across the country is going to have access to AI um, and they're going to continue developing it? Uh, and this is like just the beginning or is, is this as far as it's going? Um, and, and like these are the capabilities it's going to have. The way that I've seen it grow from just one year ago to where it is now, it's unstoppable. There's it's going to be at every single aspect that we use day, day to day whether it be just from emails all the way up to creating different uh, therapy journals for people, ways they can actually produce uh, self-care journals and everything that they can uh, do, those routines, you can actually put that into AI and create something for yourself. Uh, I do it personally uh, for my health thing. I'm trying to find uh, self-care routines that I can have for myself. And it comes up with things I would have never even thought of. And it's, it's amazing. I will say that the way we use it is going to change the way we work forever. And I think this is the next future for sure. Uh, whereas people thought Bitcoin was the next future, I think this is definitely where it's at for, for the, the work we do and the way we want to actually evolve society. I think this is exactly where we need to be. Okay. And is the information going to get current? And I might be already out of date because when I was using chat uh, GPT for the first time, it was like, I'm collecting data from 2021 and past. Is it, is it, is it at the point right now where you can ask for like, hey, what is the current um, youth risk behavior survey results for Ohio around alcohol and drugs, and it will pull current information, or is that still in the future? No, currently uh, with ChampGPT, they just released an update where if you are a paid user, you can actually get results from the internet. It's a plugin now, so you can actually pull in results from the internet. So it's basically like using Google search. You can just type in something you want from ChatGPT and it'll pull up the information from the internet. It's not the, uh, dated back to 2021 anymore. This is a, a living brain. You have everything you know on the internet right at your fingertips. Wow. So if you're thinking, oh, I need an assistant, you can have one. <laughs> you can yeah. have one with AI. <laughs> this is the executive assistant of your dreams right here. Yeah, that is incredible, man. Um, so what else are you... Then I'm going to open this up, James. Anything that you want to share knowing that People who are passionate about prevention are on here and they have, you know, limited knowledge of tech or things like that. Um, we're not entrenched in it like you are. What are some other things that we could check out or what are things that you're utilizing that could be helpful for us? I would say if you're not too big on the tech space, use it, chat to be just get in there and try to play with it. Uh, just say hello to it. I mean, it, it'll talk to you through the whole process. It's a chat by it's made to, to talk and to converse with you. And uh, the more you get used to it, the more you're going to get used to the prompts. You can create blog posts. You can create social media posts. Like uh, as you said, we can do emails now with it. I mean, even Gmail is going to have AI straight into it. So it's going to be able to pump an email out for you without even having to think about it. Um, so it's incredible. I'm using it now to uh, take notes during meetings. When I go onto like a Zoom call, it will take notes. So it can create action items that come after that. It'll rank who talked the most in what meeting and and I'll put together a report for you. And it's an incredible tool. Like you can actually go through meetings without having to take notes because it's gonna take everything for you at the end and it'll give you action items, what's been said through the whole meeting. So you don't have to do minutes or anything like that anymore. Like AI is gonna have to change the future and it's gonna make it so much easier to do stuff. Wow. And so we wanna that sounds really attractive that I got wouldn't have to take notes anymore. <laughs> it is how how do you do that? If you're on, you know, Bing Chat or Chat GBT, like, is there a button you press to say, you know, take my notes, or do you write it and then it's listening into your call? How do how do you actually do that? So with Zoom, they actually have a Zoom uh, marketplace for add-ons and plugins. So you can actually, uh, it's actually a little button when you're in a Zoom call. It has a little apps button. You can click on it, and it'll actually take you to a marketplace where you can actually check out the latest uh, AI generations they're putting into it. You can take notes, you can play music, you can do pretty much anything you want in a meeting nowadays, especially with AI. And yeah, it's it's crazy what, what you actually do with it in a meeting uh, while you're talking to someone else. It, it's it's pretty powerful. Okay. Um, 
Cool. So we're checking out the Zoom marketplace. Yes. I want marketplace. another thing that we can do. Okay. Very cool. And you are a designer, a web developer, stuff like that. Um, is there, I'm curious if you use, um, can AI create posters and stuff for you or not yet? Uh, and if not, what do you use for that? It's getting to the point where it can. It's it's slowly evolving to that point. Right now, people are just using, mostly using it for uh, generating images that you can actually put into like Photoshop and take pieces out and make a big poster with it. I mean, just yesterday, I was doing something using Midjourney, which is a um, generative image um, creator. So basically, you put in a prop, a text prop, and it turns that, that text into an image for you. So it's a very detailed image, and this is actually um, accessed through Discord, which is another app to get uh, get to uh, Midjourney, though. And that way, you can actually use that. And I put in a prop for Juneteenth. I wanted a social media post for Juneteenth. I didn't have a graphic that went with it because I've already used it all online. Uh, so I didn't want to spend the time to create one by hand. So I thought, well, I'll use Midjourney and just try it out. I put in the prompt with a colorful uh, Juneteenth celebration. And I put in all the different types of words, the colors that I wanted, the backgrounds that I wanted, the different types of style of illustration that I wanted. And it pumped out the perfect image that I needed. The only thing that was a little wonky on it was some of the hands had looked like different knobs on it. So I put it into Photoshop to take off the knobs, but I fixed the, I fixed the hands and I put on the Juneteenth uh, all the information that I needed on it, and it was perfect. I didn't have to change colors. I didn't really have to change anything else about it because Midjourney took that prompt that I had, pumped out the exact image that I needed, and it was an excellent time. I mean, I had a social media post done in 20 minutes easily. Wow. Okay. So Discord, is it discord.com? We can go yeah. to and look for Midjourney. Yeah, discord.com, you can download the uh, the app, create an account, and you can find the Midjourney server. And so Midjourney, you can actually get into it, try it out. And uh, like I said, you can take any prompt you want. You can imagine, uh, I just did a D&D uh, D &D character image for a uh, friend last night, and I created his uh, little parrot. I put that into a character of a druid. And so I made <laughs> a, a perfect image of his, uh, his parrot, and I put it into a druid costume. And he loved it. It was definitely a big hit. So that, yeah, I love it. <laughs> so you're being very creative with this. And it sounds like it's it's kind of limitless in what you can play around with. And that's kind of the posture, I think, is what I'm learning from you, is this is this is still fairly new, but it can be extremely helpful. And if you get creative with it, it can help you do things a lot faster uh, than spending your time, you know, taking notes, creating, um, you know, assets for social media is it can do this stuff quickly. I'm curious, is is it at the point where you need to pay for all this stuff right now or is it under like the free trial area, um, that kind of stuff? Most of it's free currently right now. I'm sure in the future there will be a lot of times where you either have an ad split to you or something like that going on in the future. But currently most of this really cool stuff is free. And so that's the thing I love about it because you can dip your toe into it, see what you like about it. And if it is up your alley, you can learn more about it. And it's it it's cool because it's all free right now. So let's definitely get into it if you can. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. I'm going to ask you a question that uh, is about just tech overall. And <laughs> if you have an opinion, please share it. Um, is there is there any areas in prevention since you've been in the space for a while that you've seen people use design or use? um tech and it's like wrong you're like oh man that's embarrassing that you do that <laughs> uh would you be brave enough to share what that is uh and maybe something different we could do uh well the easiest one i always see i even got one today in my inbox to post was on social media people post want to post flyers you don't post flyers on social media you put you make a little graphic that's size for the, the social media post and you put it on there a lot of times I just get so many graphics on flyers. I've got to change it all and I got to send it back. It goes through so many revisions. It's just a hassle. Just don't put flyers to social media people. <laughs> a, a great tool that um, maybe you use at Canva is if you go to canva.com, you can actually select, oh, I'm going to create an Instagram post or a Facebook post or a story. And it'll actually give you all the dimensions for you so you don't have to think about it. Um, so that, that might be helpful for fixing that problem. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Canva has been a, a huge help. I love doing stuff in Canva because you can actually change it around a little bit yourself. 
and figure out all the, those different pieces. And in Canva, they're starting to put in AI. So look for that in the future for sure. Wow. That is so cool. And what I love about it too, is you can collaborate with someone, like maybe you're filling out some details on it and you know, because you use software like Photoshop and these Adobe suite things that are actually, they have a big learning curve. So the average person is not going to know what to do with them. But if you send them a canva.com document that you designed there, you can email them that and they can, you know, they can add the dates or the details uh, and send it right back to you. And there's no special skills required. Like literally anyone can do it. Yeah, exactly. No, hopping into Canva is the best way to get into the graphic design space because it makes it super easy. Anyone can grab into it and put in a date. You can collaborate. It's like Google Docs for like a, a graphic design team. And it's excellent to have. Yeah, I, I, I definitely am trying to dip my toe a little more into it because we have so many people in our uh, community that want design elements that they can actually update themselves later on. And Canva is a great tool to actually collaborate with people and bring those those in. And those design assets can keep going forward without you having to touch them, co constantly touch them and update, uh, update dates, graphics. They can do it themselves. And so it's a, a great tool to have. I think one just came to my mind that uh, if you don't know design, you like you just don't know. And it's the difference between a JPEG and a PNG. Uh, if we have something we're putting on our website or on a poster, if they send that JPEG, you know, that you know, the file name dot JPEG or JPEG, and that it means it's going to have a white background, you can't resize it. And so it's really tough to work with. Um, so yeah, definitely if you're, if you're listening to this and you're like, oh, I, how do I get stuff to look professional? Oftentimes it's downloading the image as a dot PNG. So it has a transparent background. It's just going to Im import exactly the design you want. And without all the extra space or the square that makes it look kind of, you know, elementary, um, you know, or garage sale, like it, it looks more professional. <laughs> well said. I like it. Well said. <laughs> so Jake, I got one question for you. Sure. What do you got to do with all this free time now that you're going to be adopting AI into all of your your workflows dude it means more time connecting with students changing lives with prevention and then when i'm not doing that more time to have a life taking vacations with my wife playing games and sports staying fit staying active all that stuff okay <laughs> i love it i love that i love to yeah what about you oh i don't know i've, I've got so much stuff i'm trying to learn more from chat gpt because now i've got more time i'm trying to learn how, how to code more i'm trying to get into the javascript stuff I'm uh, trying to get to the whole sound engineering with podcasting. So it's, it's been, it's been fun. That's awesome. So you love to learn. It sounds like you're curious. Absolutely. Bring it on. I mean, if I can learn more and help out what I'm doing at my, my work, I wear so many hats already. Might as well put on a few more. So <laughs> that's awesome. And I, I have to ask this to close out. How does someone, if they have somebody, you know, like you, who is multifaceted, they're passionate about prevention. They're also doing tech. You, like you said, you're wearing many hats. Um, I imagine that any coalition or organization with this person wants to keep you. How do they build a workplace that keeps a creative driven person like you happy and keep you there? <laughs> I, I get free rearing, unfortunately, unfortunately to go whatever direction I want. So if I'm feeling to do something, I am given the space to kind of find it, find, try to find out if I, it's something we can actually use in prevention and to see if the community actually enjoys it. And so I've been given the, the free reign to take on these different avenues, different things to do. So I, I've taken on uh, video production in the last couple of years as well for social media. And it's just been awesome to learn the whole video editing space and how that all works. So it's been incredible to get the opportunities that I've had and my work kind of grows with that uh that space so i've been given that the free reign unfortunately i've got to say that's the free reign to to do all those things and to give that power <laughs> <laughs> well that to me sounds like hey if you've got somebody on your team like james give them that autonomy that independence to run with their ideas to stay creative because that sounds like what you thrive on um so with that we'll end the episode and if you're listening thanks for tuning into one more episode of party talk where we empower leaders in youth drug prevention please subscribe check in next monday for that new episode and tell a friend